key Trump ally and Republican Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio joins me now live in studio. Thanks so much for being here. Thank really you. appreciate it. So you just heard Secretary Blinken try to make the case for aid to both Israel and Ukraine. You and Senate Republicans uh, recently blocked a package to support Ukraine and Israel. Um, among the reasons, uh, more uh, uh, support for a border package to protect the southern border. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell, however, talking about the, the aid for Israel and Ukraine, said that threats from Russia, China, Iran, Hamas, they're all interconnected. I want you to take a listen to what he had to say. Sure. The challenges facing America and our allies today are not on a la carte menu of projects we can address at our leisure. America doesn't have the luxury of facing these threats individually. Our ability to contend with complex, simultaneous threats is exactly what our adversaries are testing. Now, you, you disagree with that, and you, and you oppose aid to Ukraine. Ex explain your position. Well, so first of all, Jake, I think it's possible to have separate debates. In fact, congressional Republicans tried to force an Israel alone aid package just a couple of weeks ago that Democrats blocked in the Senate. Uh, so we can have separate debates. I think that we need to have separate debates. But on the Ukraine question in particular, Everybody knows, everybody with a brain in their head, Jake, knows that this was always going to end in negotiation. The idea that Ukraine was going to throw Russia back to the 1991 borders was preposterous. Nobody actually believed it. So what we're saying to the president and really to the entire world is you need to articulate what the ambition is. What is $61 billion going to accomplish that $100 billion hasn't? We have to remember, Jake, Ukraine is functionally destroyed as a country. The average age of a soldier in the Ukrainian army right now is 43. That's tragic. That's older than me. I'm 39. If this thing goes on a, a little bit longer, the average age of a Ukrainian soldier is going to be older than you. And then a year later, it could be a wolf blitzer. That is a tragedy. What does it look like? I don't like this age graph I'm thing so, you're I'm doing. sorry, Jake. But, I'm 54 but, 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 for those wondering. I, 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 yeah. We are getting to a place yeah. where we are going to be functionally on the hook to pay for Ukrainian pensioners, to rebuild the entire country. Right. We need to bring the killing to a stop. And that's what American leadership should be doing, not writing more blank checks to the war. So what do you make of the argument, though, that if the U.S. and NATO and the EU cede part of Ukraine to Putin, or even all of Ukraine to Putin, um, that really all we're doing is putting out the welcome mat for him to then invade a country that is in the NATO alliance, such as Poland. So there's two reasons I don't buy this. First of all, Putin has showed he's much weaker than a lot of people feared. The Ukrainians have fought bravely. They've also stalled Putin at a very small amount of territorial gain relative to the entire country. The idea that he can march to Poland or Berlin is preposterous. And the other thing that this really misses here is we have to remember our NATO allies, with the exception of a few Eastern Europeans, are not carrying their fair share of the burden. Most of them don't even spend 2% of their GDP on defense. If Putin is a threat to Berlin, that means the Germans should be changing something about their defense policy. It doesn't mean we can write indefinite checks to Ukraine. Right. But Russia has been proven to be something of, of, a, of a paper tiger because the U.S. has been helping Ukraine, right? I mean, that's the reason. Well, it's also because, of course, the Ukrainians have fought very bravely. I think it's also because, look, you cannot occupy an entire territory the size of Ukraine with the amount of troops that Russia has. Uh, the idea that you can go even further and control multiple European nations is, I think, a scare tactic to get people distracted from the fact that our Ukraine policy just doesn't make a ton of sense. You know, I listened to Secretary Blinken. What are we trying to do, Jake? What is the end goal here? How long does this go until the president can articulate the answer to those questions? I don't know why we would write another blank check. Well, I guess the argument might be, and I'm certainly not Secretary Blinken, but the argument Please. might be that Russia invaded a sovereign nation that is an ally. And what Russia, and this is a pretty, pretty stark morality tale, that what Russia is doing is evil. And Putin's goals are, as he has stated them time and time again, to rebuild the former USSR. It is a stark morality tale, Jake, but we can't make strategic decisions based on stark morality tales. We have to figure out what is in America's best interest. We have a food crisis that's getting worse because of the prolonged war in Eastern Europe. We have an energy crisis that's threatening to swamp multiple allied governments in Western Europe. What's in America's best interest is to accept Ukraine is going to have to cede some territory to the Russians, and we need to bring this war to a close. But when I think about the great human tragedy here, hundreds of thousands of Eastern Europeans, innocent, have been killed in this conflict. The thing that's in our interest and in theirs is to stop the killing.